Hello and welcome to another Unity tutorial from me, Alec Kaloka, in Winnipeg, Canada. And it's sunny today. This is good. We like sunny. So today we're going to talk a bit about the Unity GUI stuff that's built into Unity. Um, this is a really simple GUI system that you can use without too much effort. It doesn't look very interesting. I wouldn't use it for, say, the front end of your game. Um, but it is useful for stuff like debugging and making little quick test uh, interfaces. So basically the reason why I want to go through this is somebody asked how to start making a title screen. And this will reveal some of the basics of that. Um, so we're just going to save our scene as title. I'm going to pretend that this is a title screen. And we're going to create a new JavaScript here called, uh, it's called Title GUI. And yes, it is pronounced GUI for those of you that are not aware. So to start the script off, we're going to have to type function on GUI. Now, basically, if you remember from last time, last few tutorials we've been doing a lot of stuff with function update. Update is a function that gets called automatically once per frame by Unity. So on GUI is like that and then it gets called every frame but this is specifically for drawing and updating the built-in GUI stuff. And now we're gonna put our little GUI script in here now GUI.button basically will create a button, um, <laughs> surprisingly enough. So we give it a rectangle to define where on the screen it's going to be. Now this is a coordinate in pixels. It's not in 3D space. This is the 2D GUI. So 0, 0 is the upper left corner of the screen. And the size of the button will just go 200, 100 for now. And then we enter a name, which will appear on the button. So something like that. So we switch over to Unity here and we're going to create an empty object. Move it to 0, 0, 0 just for the hell of it. Um, attach the title GUI script to the object. And if we run, we should see a big click me button over in the upper left. You can click it, but nothing will happen right now. So how do we make it do stuff? Well, this is kind of a fancy thing, but GUI.button will actually return a value once it is clicked. And remember that this function on GUI is getting called every frame. So every frame, it's drawing this button and checking to see if it's being clicked. So we can just say if GUI.button, and that will mean once this is clicked, Let's say once the button is clicked, do the following code. Uh, so right now we're just going to do a little stupid test. We're going to create a cube, move it to 0, 0, 0. And let's rename this title GUI. And we're going to make a link here to cube renderer of type renderer. So we've got a new variable here created on the script. We're going to link in a renderer and it's going to be this cube. Why are we doing this? Well, we're doing this so we can change the color of the cube as a test. So if cube renderer dot material.color is equal to color dot red let's say then we'll set it to white and these color dot red and color dot white are predefined things in unity that you can use oops we'll say else cube renderer dot material dot color is color dot red so if the color is already red, we set it to white. If it's anything other than red, we set it to red. And it's going to start off as being gray or white here. 
you can see it's changing color, but we don't have a light in the scene, so it's kind of dark. We'll just throw a light in there. Okay. So there we go, we can just toggle the color. And now you can do interesting stuff too, like we could actually change properties of the button based on what's going on here. So we could do, it's gonna be really sloppy code, but bear with me. Um, let's just say button name is a string, called click me, or let's just say the cube is, and we're gonna do if the color is red, So what we're doing here is we're just adding text to a string. Now a string is a sequence of characters. Characters are basically letters. Um, so once these are put together, they're called a string, which basically just means a string of text. So we start uh, with a string that is set to the cube is with a space at the end, and then we're tacking on individual color names depending on what the color is set to. And then we can pass in button name instead of passing in click me. So let's see if that works. The cube is white, the cube is red, the cube is white. Sweet. So you can see how this GUI might come in handy for certain things. Like if you were uh, making a platformer game, for example, and you wanted to tweak values while you were playing the game, you could make some buttons for that. Now remember that in Unity, you can actually just run the game in the editor and tweak values whenever you want. Like you can just, I'm running the game right now and I'll just change the size of the cube and then I'll test this and then I'll change the size of the cube again. Um, but it's still useful for other things that the Unity built-in editor GUI doesn't provide access for. And you might notice some of these things coming up as you start to work on games in Unity. Of course, we were talking about making a title screen and this really has nothing to do with the title screen, so we're just going to comment this whole block out with these little comment symbols here. Um, and now we're going to go through creating a few new game continue and exit buttons just to sort of give you the sense that we're creating a little title screen mock-up here. So before we start, I'm going to define some values up here. Uh, button width set to 200, button height we'll set to 250, and spacing we'll set to 100. We might not use all these values right now, but they will be used eventually. So GUI.button, remember we have to create a rectangle to define where it is. Now we want these buttons to be centered in the middle of the screen and we can actually get the width of the screen from Unity with this screen.width line here. So half of the width of the screen would be screen.width divided by 2. And we're going to subtract from that button width divided by 2. So basically we're going to the center of the screen and then moving to the left half of a button width. That should be the correct start position for our button. Remember this defines the upper left coordinate of the button. And these have been changed to button. Okay. So this is a new game. 